though modern remakes aren't getting any better, they're also not slowing down. In fact, there's been an uptick in them over recent years. So then we have to ask ourselves why? How come Hollywood continues to keep pushing out mediocre to downright awful remakes, reboots, sequels, prequels, sidequels, and any other flavor they can conjure up? There are many reasons, none of which have to do with creativity or art. It's always about money at the end of the day, or holding on to an IP. If Disney or Amazon or whoever owns a certain property, that thing can go away if they don't utilize it. So with that in mind, today I want to focus on the top five reasons, in my opinion, most modern remakes and reboots fail. Let's begin. As we go on this journey together, if you find yourself liking the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and comment below. I would appreciate it. In the number five spot, we have movies that come out that stray too far from the original material. That might be the movie that came before it, or it might be the comic book iteration, the book it's based off of, whatever the case may be. Let's look at the all-female Ghostbusters, for instance. The OG Ghostbusters movies, the first two, had the formula. It had the schlubby guys, they were trying to make a quick buck, busting ghosts, it wasn't like a passion project for most of them. It was just something to pay the bills. That's what made it funny and charming in a sense. When they announced the new Ghostbusters was going to be all female, it already told audiences we're prioritizing stunt casting over the actual content. And from there it just got worse. There was no witty commentary, the jokes were just stupid, bang over your head dumb. And to make matters worse, it brought back most of the OG Ghostbusters only to have them play different characters altogether. What? What? Why? It's the worst kind of nostalgia bait you can do. Another recent example would be Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal, a movie that's Roadhouse in title only. Gyllenhaal's character isn't even a cooler at all. He's just a UFC fighter that's got some baggage to his name. Now, to be fair, I didn't mind this new version of Roadhouse. I was just insulted it was even called Roadhouse because it has nothing in common with the other one. If it wanted to do its own thing, change locations, change professions, really change the storyline completely, then what's the point of even using the title? Well, it's to retain the property and it's to pull in an audience that's very familiar with the Swayze original. It's an automatic boost in viewership just because of name recognition. In the number four spot, it's the egregious thing that mainly Disney's been doing with their live action adaptations of their own original cartoon properties, which is attempting to fix things that aren't actually broken. Since the animated classics have been around for a long time, we as a society grow and change. Our commentary, the way we look at the world, it, it evolves or it just turns in a different direction. So when Disney goes back and they're like, okay, we're gonna remake Pinocchio or Cinderella or The Lion King or Lady and the Tramp or I mean, all of these have been done at this point. Let's do shot for shot at some parts, but let's completely change a character because we didn't like how they were coming off to the audience. Or they'll do things completely out of left field because they don't want to get sued by some random mom that has Lilo and Stitch on in the background. There's a scene in Lilo and Stitch, the animated one, not the, the live action one that's not out yet, but it's very much in the work, sadly, where Lilo's playing hide and go seek and she goes inside of the washing machine. They went back and reanimated this to something completely different that kids, I guess, can safely hide in. I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be, just a, just a cupboard next to the washing machine. That makes sense. That adds up. It's just these little trivial things like Disney's helicopter parenting from afar. So, so when your little kid watches it, they don't try to also hide in the washing machine. How about parent? That's a thought, how about parent? I know I'm getting a little off course from the topic here, but I'll circle back. In Disney's Aladdin, the live action film, Jasmine had kind of a damsel in distress feel to her in the animated film, or at least in their eyes. It, it didn't in mine, but that's what they thought. So they had to give her more dedicated time in her own song, which to be fair, in a mediocre film, that song is pretty solid. It's, it's, it's a pretty solid song and that actress is absolutely stunning in the role. But the scene feels completely out of place in that moment in the film where she's held captive because it's about not being silenced and not being held prisoner. And she is being silenced. 
and being held prisoner. <laughs> like, okay, she's just singing her heart out, but nothing has changed in the moment. The most obvious new example that's coming out is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The dwarves were originally cast as some little people. Makes sense. Kind of like when you have a giant on screen and you cast a really tall dude. But Peter Dinklage was pissed. And he's like, how dare you cast short men to play short men, fictitious characters in a world that don't exist. What, come on, what, what are we doing anymore? So Disney got scared and now the dwarves are CG. They're all computer generated characters. Uh, you, congratulations, Peter, you just played yourself. I mean, I know he made a lot of money, but there's probably a lot of shorter dudes in the industry that are looking for work. And those are the easiest roles to land. But that's what these movies do. They take something that wasn't exactly broken or out of place, they change it, and then it becomes even more distracting. Like, why, why isn't this how it was before? And it almost always leads to another set of questions entirely. In the number three spot, I'm putting the movies that try to follow the popular trends. A big one that stands out going back to a different new Ghostbusters would be Ghostbusters Afterlife. This movie was well received by most audiences. I did not care for this film. I found it eye-rolly. I found the nostalgia to be over the top. I found the tone of this film to be completely different than what I had seen before, which, okay, fine, you're trying something new with Ghostbusters, but why are you trying something new? Is it because you have an interesting approach to the flick, or is it because Stranger Things is really popular right now as this movie comes out? So we wanna capitalize on that. And we're even gonna have one of the kids from Stranger Things in our movie. It's going to be a teenager angsty flick with no real humor, a lot of callbacks, and just a somber tone all around. A big reason a lot of these films from back in the day, like The Goonies, or Back to the Future, or The Sandlot, the list goes on, the reason they worked so well is because they had an identity. They were wholly original. They weren't following trends that came out when those movies were made. They were making their own trends. They were starting the styles that you would see in films to come. They were setting new standards. And so for Ghostbusters Afterlife, it felt very samey. Like, okay, this is what's going on right now. This is what people are into. Let's put that into the Ghostbusters universe. To their credit, they succeeded. But in my eyes, it felt like a cheap imitation of other things. I would say the new Crow movie does that as well, but I don't honestly know what the hell they're trying to emulate. It was certainly its own thing, but man, was it far removed from anything interesting. It had a Suicide Squad Jared Leto Joker type lead character, which was a horrible choice. And it reeked of a movie that Sony would put out in its Spider-Man universe that doesn't have Spider-Man in it. This felt aligned with like a Venom, a Morbius, or a Madam Web in terms of quality. Point Break did that years ago too. Anybody remember the Point Break remake that no one asked for in the world? It tried to emulate the popularity of those really serious, grounded movies like Dark Knight. Give it that almost heat vibe to it. But Point Break was great because it was fun as hell. It was extreme as hell. It had these larger than life characters. So putting them in a somber toned film does not match up with what people want. To be fair, nobody wanted the movie to begin with. In the number two spot, easily could be flipped to the number one spot, is Nostalgia Bait. I've already brought it up in some of those other movies I referenced, but the nostalgia, the Memba Berries, it's a hell of a drug. And I think people are kind of sick of it. Now, I really enjoyed the new Alien Romulus. It was not for the nostalgia. It was not for the cheap callbacks. In fact, I found myself rolling my eyes just as much as people that hated that movie. But I really loved the look of the movie, emulating the ones that came before. I thought it was incredibly well directed. I loved the kills. I loved the xenomorph designs. Everything hit for me in the right way. You can just see the director's passion on the screen. It didn't feel like a money-making machine. It felt like there was actual craft on display there. But it certainly does have the nostalgia bait. It's got camera shots from the original. It has callback lines from Alien and Aliens. It's got references to Prometheus and other films. It, like across the board, it's doing it. But Alien Romulus is not a remake. It's not a reboot. It's a soft reboot which is not part of the conversation today, but yes, it is a soft reboot. It's going back to what worked before, Force Awakens, Jurassic World style, tweaking the wheel just enough 
so that we can move forward in another direction. Branching off in what I would say is a third direction for Alien. You went over here, you had Alien 3 and Resurrection. They went this way with Prometheus and Coven shit. And now we're going over here with Romulus and we'll see what happens next. It's making money. It's making good money. So I think we'll see more of this. And yeah, I guess you could also say AVP is somewhere over here, but that's that's its own thing. The nostalgia bait that annoys me is when it overtakes the film itself. When the movie has nothing else going for it and all that's left are, hey, look at that. Remember this? Remember that? Ghostbusters Afterlife is full of it. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is far more egregious with it. Back to the Disney films, they do it constantly. They're shot for shot remaking portions of their old films. They are so bad at this. Little Mermaid, for instance, half that movie felt like it was just, I'm watching a shittier version of the animated flick. It had nothing exciting to bring to the table. Jurassic World had plenty of references as well, but the sequels would go even further by bringing back old characters, having them say their own dialogue. They announced a Harry Potter reboot TV series on Max. It's starting from scratch, new characters, new everything but they teased it by playing the iconic music, Hedwig's theme, from the Harry Potter films that we've already seen and loved. So if you're going to go a different route and tell the world we're starting from scratch, how dare you use the music that we already know and love? Because it's nostalgia. It's triggering our emotional senses to be excited for something new, even though they told us it's not the same at all. For my number one spot, I'm pointing out all the movies that come out that have nothing interesting to say in the slightest. Remember Fantastic Four, AKA Fant Four Stick? That's a great example of a movie that has nothing interesting to offer. The film looks miserable, it's dour as shit, the characters are uninteresting, the origin story has already been told for these characters. It's just across the board incredibly pathetic. New Crow is the exact same way. What do you have to offer audiences that they haven't seen before? Oh, well, this film's gonna be different. It's about people that fall in love, the woman's killed, and then he goes on a murderous rampage of revenge. We've never seen that before. Recently, Twisters came out. I said it was perfectly fine. I didn't love it by any means. I was really annoyed by how it was basically a carbon copy remake changing some character dynamics and traits around, but it's the same exact template as what we had before. There is nothing really new or interesting going on in this film. And yet, it's a huge success because people love tornadoes. And that Glenn Powell is so dreamy. But there was opportunity to make a much better film, a much more interesting movie. Since it's been a long time since we had a good big natural disaster film, though, Twisters benefited from that and the fact that there just hasn't been a whole lot of tornado movies. You got Twister, you got Into the Storm, and, and what, what else really is there? Sharknado? Not quite the same. Again, pivoting back to Disney's live action stuff, that's my biggest issue with them. There's nothing new going on here. Oftentimes, they're the same exact movie that we saw wonderfully animated years earlier. So why the hell would I go out and watch The Lion King again when I have a better version at home? I mean, obviously, Audience is dead. It's one of the highest grossing movies of all time. And now they have a prequel coming out for Mufasa. But just because a movie makes a lot of money doesn't equal good. That's oftentimes what I see in comments. They'll use it as a crutch to hold on to. Oh, you don't like Avatar 2? Tell that to the you know billions of dollars it made. Okay, cool. People like going out to a, you know, a big amusement park attraction ride movie. That's what it is. The Avatar films are huge budget, high spectacle affairs. You got 3D glasses, you get your reclining chairs, and you spend two and a half hours getting wowed by the visuals. That's why people go and watch them. Does that mean it's good? Fuck no. Avatar 2 sucked. I'll die on that hill, and I love James Cameron. James Cameron's given me some of the best movies of all time, with Aliens and Terminator 2. Freaking True Lies is great. I mean, the guy's, the guy's amazing. So yeah, he, I don't like his Avatar films. Who cares? The point still stands. You look at films like Psycho, the shot for shot in color remake, taking away everything that was great about the original, turning it into a soulless product. Poltergeist, Pet Cemetery, Robocop, The Mummy. There are so many of these films that just get shat out and they're instantly forgotten about. There, I know people that like the new edgier Dark Knight Robocop, 
but I don't know anyone that thinks it's better than the original because that film had such a unique identity. It had social commentary. It had tongue-in-cheek humor. It was just an all-around awesome film. Do you remember Total Recall getting remade? Neither do I, but it did. Flatliners, Taxi, Red Dawn, The Day the Earth Stood Still. There are so many of these forgotten in the bowels of remakes and reboots. Now that we got that out of the way, I want to tell you there are some good ones. There are plenty of remakes actually that have done a great job of taking what maybe didn't work the first time around and turning it into something special. Or maybe the original was so old that no one even knows what the hell it is. The Thing is often referenced and it should be. It's one of the greatest horror films of all time. The Fly, Heat, Cape Fear. Hell, Brendan Fraser's The Mummy is a remake. Ocean's Eleven. Invasions of the Body Snatchers has been remade several times. I think the Donald Sutherland one is just fantastic. Zack Snyder's The Dawn of the Dead. A great way to shake up the formula that came before, set it in a mall. It's an awesome horror flick. The Departed. Scarface. A Star is Born. I think there's three versions of that movie and they knock it out of the park every time. So it can be done as long as you have interesting characters, a great storyline, some actual passion up on the screen, and the film doesn't try to insult, discredit, change, fix, or do whatever it thinks it needs to to the OG, I think people will be happy. Except for The New Crow. That movie just sucked. All right, I'd love to hear from you though. Are you getting sick of all these modern remakes, retellings, reboots, sequels, all that stuff? Leave a comment. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. I post movie commentary, reviews, rants, live streams every single week on the channel. Would love to have you stick around. If you really like my commentary, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm bitching up a storm about first world problems in a comedic fashion. If you love this kind of stuff, please think about leaving a super thanks. Right underneath this video, there's a little icon. You can say, hey, here's five bucks, Adam. Keep it up, great work or become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Hopefully I see you next time.